Welcome to Biz Lounge, where we'll give you a peek into the minds and souls of some of the greatest business leaders. Today, we track the journey of a company that has introduced a bevy of snacks and beverages in India and has penetrated some of the most remote parts of the country with their array of products in just the span of two decades. We're talking about PepsiCo India, a $60 billion company globally that employs 6,400 people here. Manu Anand, the head of India operations, is with us today. Manu, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. First, let's take a look at how this F&B giant got its start here back in 1989. It was 1898 when American pharmacist Kayla Brandom concocted a drink that not only aided in digestion, but also tasted great and provided a boost of energy. He called it Brad's drink, eventually renaming it Pepsi, and there began the soft drinks journey as it started transforming itself into a leading food and beverage brand worldwide. Both in beverages, beverages earlier and then in foods, the kind of astronomical and exponential growth we've seen. So uh, if you think of our size today, uh, we are one of the largest uh, FMCG and uh, food and beverage companies uh, in the country. And we've sort of done in about 20, 22 years what other companies have uh, done in, in a much longer period of time. The American company entered India 23 years ago with their iconic brand Pepsi and grew as it diversified into foods and other beverages. It's also betting big on trends in healthy snacking with products under its Aliva brand, as well as catering to more local flavors with their Namkeens under the Leher brand. I think three phenomenal local brands that we created here. One is Kurkure on the, uh, for the foods business, Mango Slice for the beverage business, and Nimbus. As more and more Indians snack in between meals, there seems to be no end in the offerings made to suit a variety of palates and an extraordinary number of regional tastes. It's a complex world for F&Bs to navigate through, yet is a fast-growing business, with Indians shelling out about 40% of their incomes on food. With stiff competition from not only other large companies, but also from local players, the key ingredient for PepsiCo's growth story to continue will be focusing on the next big product hit. Okay, so Manu, 2011 was a tough year for PepsiCo globally. It laid off about 3% of its staff, that was about 8,700 people, and revenues were impacted as well. Can you give us an idea of how India did for the company? Well, we had a super business here in 2011 in India. Very solid double-digit growth in both our beverage and foods businesses. We've got eight brands, over 1,000 crores in sales, and those brands really resonate with the consumer. That combined with our great distribution, our innovation, and our overall business model has resulted in not just a great 2011, but I think the last five to seven years of phenomenal growth for PepsiCo India. Mm -hmm. And given some of the economic turmoil that some of the countries in the West are facing, how important are emerging economies to PepsiCo sales and more specifically India? Well, India is a very important part of the PepsiCo portfolio. We are among the top five markets outside the United States. It will be Mexico, China, Russia, India. These would be the four. And clearly, in the last few years, the growth here has really contributed a lot to the growth of PepsiCo. These are markets with still very low per capita consumption, growing economies, growing GDPs, and PepsiCo clearly sees these as markets that are going to contribute a lot for the future years, and India is right at the center of that. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some trends that you're seeing in food and beverage consumption in India. Have you seen a significant change in habits over the years? Well, we're seeing huge growth in the packaged food and beverage industry, and I'm sure you talk to people in restaurants, they'll tell you exactly the same. And I think a number of factors driving that. Firstly, greater disposable incomes. Secondly, of course, the younger working population, very, very predisposed to snacking and to, quick and to drinking beverages and with large disposable incomes. And thirdly, I think just the fact that you've got now working families, working spouses, and convenient food is just plays that much more of a role in their lives relative to some years ago. Mm -hmm. The other one is just, let's say, people are getting much more multi-cuisine in their habits. Food really has been moving across. Food habits are moving across the country. I mean, a masala dosa is as much a fast food now in North India as a chola batura now is in, in, in Tamil Nadu. And you're also working on a range of low to mid-priced vitamin and mineral enriched snacks. Tell us why you're betting big on this. Well, I'll, I'll give the, the example I'll take is what uh, the product we introduced called Leher Ayan Chusti. 
and the need we were trying to address was iron deficiency. 56% of the women in India have iron deficiency and the state we focused on, Andhra Pradesh, 70% of the women have iron deficiency. So we said let's approach this on two planks. Firstly, increasing the awareness of iron deficiency amongst this target group, but secondly, introducing a low-priced, tasty snack that can address some of the needs. It sells for two rupees and it addresses 25% of the RDA for iron focused on the adolescent girl child. You started a joint venture with Tata called Nourishko. Yeah. Um, tell us more about this and why you decided to start it. I think firstly it was a partnership of two very like-minded partners, very similar values and a very similar approach to the consumer and customer. And we were both playing in the hydration space, Tata Global Beverages and PepsiCo. We both had various forms of innovation to take to the marketplace and uh, so it was just a perfect match where we've created this company in Arishko and they've already launched two excellent products, uh, Tata Gluco Plus and Tata Water Plus. Tata Gluco Plus, a hydration product in a cup, sells for seven rupees, again targeted more to consumers at the bottom of the pyramid, addressing their functional need. And Tata Water Plus, India's first fortified water, water fortified with minerals, uh, which are taste neutral. We're currently operating within the state of Tamil Nadu, building out the model. We've now expanded out to Andhra Pradesh with the intent, obviously, to go national soon. And some time back, you had to pull your zero-calorie drink max from the market, despite some of these trends in healthy eating. Can you tell us the reason behind that? Well, firstly, max is a great product, and it was really liked by the consumer. It's just, I think, at this point of time, the market was not ready for two zero-sugar colas coming from, the, coming from PepsiCo, and for us, it was really stretching our resources. Mm -hmm. So we test-marketed it in Delhi. We had some good responses, but we realized that replicating that nationally would really be a little bit before its time. I think you're going to see it come back to the market a few years from now again. Okay, and with that, we'll take a quick break, but stay with us for more with PepsiCo India's Manu Anand.